So, Keith, if you, so how much is, is how does one pay for uh, your content right now? Uh, they pay by watching ads. Okay. Very, very, very simple. Somebody, just to say, kind of give you the user experience because it may not be clear. Um, you're watching a show on the History Channel. You just did a, a project with them. And halfway through the show, it'll say, you've seen the Battle of the Bulge, now play it. You know, 15 second tag for them. And then you go to history.com and then you download the client that contains all of our stuff. So it's a two minute download to get there. Uh, and at this point, they've seen nothing. You know, there are no ads. We just want to introduce them to the product line. And then they find the game. They're going to play Ujima, and they're going to play Dino Hunters episode 45, you know. When they click on that game, they go download it. There are a couple ads that occur during the download. There are other ads that occur actually, you know, in-game. You know, they all have different values. Uh, and then that's it. You know, they play the game. They play with their friends. They play single player. Next time they go to uh, download the game, I want to get the next episode and see a couple more ads. So it's TV. Okay. In short. And Robert, is Atari currently experimenting with or taking advantage of uh, in-game advertising? We're, we're, uh, we are doing some in-game advertising uh, and uh, you know, what, what the way that typically takes place in, in a variety of different uh, companies that kind of support the back end for this, but you can replace uh, you know, 3D textures uh, in, in the game world. And you can, uh, you can put a Coco billboard up or a Mark Echo billboard up in the, in the middle of the game uh, at runtime. You know, so you have to have some connectivity if you want to change that ad out or you want to get uh, some visibility to are you are you hitting your your, uh, your target uh, with that with that uh, with that ad? But yeah, then we do do some of that. It's not a uh, core part of our, our business model. Again, it's kind of as I was categorizing our business models, it's kind of in that emergent mm -hmm. uh, bag of stuff that that's the problem we're working on. Mm -hmm. And what about the companies you cover, Ted? Or does that yeah, in-game advertising is, is definitely seen as, a, as an opportunity. Again, I think it's a, a late console cycle opportunity, and that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, again, it's the fact that you need an online-enabled console base where you can push content, because that's, that's really the goal, is to have this dynamic advertising environment where you can constantly push fresh content, mm -hmm. rather than having to hard code the ads in. And then secondly, you need a rate card, uh, so advertisers know uh, what they're getting and how much they're going to be paying. Mm -hmm. uh, Nielsen, Activision, and some of the other publishers are, are working on uh, building that rate card um, and standards in in-game advertising, but that's still a work in progress. So those two things will take time, um, but it, it, it is an opportunity. I, I've heard, um, I mean, ballpark estimates from some of the, the venture capital firms who invest in this this area early. Uh, ranging around 50% of the games that they saw could be uh, viable candidates for in-game advertising. And just to give you an example, for one of the companies I cover, Electronic Arts, and Need for Speed this past year, they had 180 different billboards in the game that they marketed to clients, uh, from General Motors to the Universal Studios, Dell, and uh, they expected about $4 million in revenue through the, the end of uh, the quarter, uh, December 31st. So, um, it's, uh, I mean, it's still, it's a growing opportunity for them, and Need for Speed is a, a game that's really made for advertising. Sure. Um, you can just have those billboards anywhere. Um, what percentage of the game sales is that? Oh, for, for them it would be less than 1%. Yeah, so it's still, it's still very, very minor. Um, uh, the, the firms that I've talked with, Double Fusion, Met Massive, that's now owned by Microsoft, have uh, ballparked the the opportunity is one to two dollars per unit um, sold, um, and again, that would be maybe on 50% of the games that are out there. Uh, for the publishers, that could be pretty lucrative because most of that falls to the bottom line. There's not a lot of additional coding and expense you're going to need to do in order to introduce that advertising. So, a lot of that one to two dollars per unit um, could end up falling to the bottom. Line. Then let me introduce one of the conundrums of, of in-game advertising. Um, um, let, me, let me give it by, by analogy. Um, you're going to see a movie, I don't know if you guys ever saw Independence Day, it's an old movie, you know, back when I was in college. And spaceships, aliens, the whole thing. And then there's this one scene where um, they're trying to demonstrate you know, the force field, and so a guy shoots a soda can off the top of the spaceship. Of course, it's a Pepsi can. And it was a product placement, and that's what they paid for. Um, and so there was some incremental revenue that came from the placement of that, that Pepsi can in the middle of... Wait, did Pepsi play for it or Coke? Uh, well, good question. <laughs> <laughs> it was 
destroy our just most beautiful product. Pepsi can you ever saw. I think it was Pepsi. Um, but there was, there was some incremental revenue that they made from it. Just like when you watch Survivor, there are product placements all over the place. Um, but the product placements are an incremental part you know, of these businesses. It's not you know, the core of the business. The core of the advertising business, at least you know, for television, is they stop the show, make sure that you're watching you know, whatever's coming on there, and then they show a big ad. It takes over the whole screen. And the reason why they sell those ads is because advertisers really like to buy those ads. And so we're in a very similar place because you know, I'm talking to advertisers and Massive and IGA and Double Fusion, all, all buddies of ours. And uh, we compare notes on these things. When you are doing product placements beside the game, I've got a Pepsi can, it's on top of the spaceship, it's in like episode 35, and you know, you kind of got to make your way down there. It is not every single consumer who's going to make their way right down to that perfect product placement that is contextualized, makes the product look good, it's exactly in the place of the game where it's supposed to be. And so there's money from it. There's 1%, 5%, something like that of revenue really ought to come from product placement inside games. And that's what most people mean when they talk about in-game advertising. The, the scary thing is that you know, you're going to talk to um, Procter and & Gamble and they say, yeah, it's going to be great. Sometime during the game, stop what you're doing, make everybody watch this ad. <coughs> you can imagine putting that in a retail product. It's just no way. No, not for a game that I just spent 50 bucks for. I suspect that there's going to end up being these two different models. That there's going to be something that looks like retail or like movies. I pay money for it. I want this great experience. It's going to be the hottest technology, the coolest experience. I want to see something I've never seen before. They're going to spend $30 million on it. It's going to be awesome. But I actually don't want to see the kinds of ads in that game that most advertisers want to buy. There's this other model that we believe in, which, which is called television, which is that you're going to give people really great product. Maybe it's not Halo 3. Maybe it's a Halo 2 point. <laughs> but it's television content. It's, it's like all the stuff that came out with last Christmas. We can get that done. And I'm going to play that game, and it's going to be free, and there's going to be lots of it. It's going to be appointment-based, and I'm going to have characters that I really like, and it's going to be new stuff happening all the time. There's other things like you know, that are part of that. And then, will I be willing to take a more intrusive ad presence in those sorts of games in order to get this free content for free? And, and that's really the bet on these things. And so, you know, the, the bet that we are making is that there ends up being something that looks a lot like TV, and there ends up being something that looks a lot like product placement. And so far, the focus for, for most of the people in the space has been on the product placement side. But um, you know, I'm sure that people will watch and see what we're doing.